Hello, I am Miss Janet, and the title of today's lesson is God versus Pharaoh, Plague 6 through 9. It could be also called God versus Pharaoh, Part 2. Each plague kept getting worse as God was trying to get the Pharaoh, or King of Egypt, to obey his command and let the people of Israel go. Our scripture is 7 through 11. Our memory verse and song are going to be the same for this lesson and the next lesson. As both the verse and the song are so important, I want you to really get them in your mind. is 1 John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Let's say that together. 1 John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. The Bible tells us in Leviticus 7, 14, for the life of every creature is its blood. Its blood is its life. Without blood, we die. God required blood to be offered as proof the animal, or later Jesus, the Son of God, had truly died. In our last lesson, we saw Moses walk up to Pharaoh and demand the people of Israel be set free from their slavery. Pharaoh refused, so God sent five terrible plagues, judgments, or events on the people of Egypt to make Pharaoh change his mind, but he still refused to let them go. Why the plagues? Why did God do this? Exodus 7 verses 4 and 5, God told Moses Pharaoh would refuse to let the people go. So God is speaking in, chapter, in verse 4 of chapter 7. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my host, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great acts of judgment. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out the people of Israel from among them. The plagues so far have been the water in the Nile River was turned to blood. There were frogs all over everything. Then came gnats then flies, and number five, all of the animals outside died. Exodus 7, 8, the sixth plague boils. As God instructed Moses and Aaron, verse 10, so they took soot from the kiln and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses threw it into the air, and it became boils breaking out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils came up on the magicians and upon all the Egyptians, not the Israelites. Verse 12, But the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken to Moses. God did not make Pharaoh refuse to let the Israelites go. He just revealed what was in Pharaoh's heart. A kiln is a very hot oven where clay is baked to make bowls and plates and cups. The priests were embarrassed to stand before Pharaoh or Moses with boils because it showed that Moses' God was greater than their gods. Egyptian priests had to look perfect to function in their temples, so all the temples to their gods were shut down as the priests could not serve with boils. The boils went away and life went back to the new normal. It was spring and the plants were coming up, but plants don't all come up at the same time. The seventh plague, hail, God's message to Pharaoh. Exodus 7, 14. God is speaking, so that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. 
For by now I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut off from the earth. That's be dead. But for this purpose I have raised you up to show you my power, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. You are still exalting yourself against my people and will not let them go. Behold, about this time tomorrow I will cause very heavy hail to fall, such has never been seen in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Now therefore, get your livestock and all that you have in the field into safe shelter. For every man and beast that is in the field and is not brought home will die when the hail falls on them. Then whoever feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh hurried his slaves and his livestock into the houses. But whoever did not pay attention to the word of the Lord left his slaves and his livestock in the field. God said he could have easily killed all the Egyptians by now, but he was giving them time to repent and obey God. Verse 22, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, so that there may be hail in the land of Egypt, on man and beast and every plant of the field in the land of Egypt. Verse 23, Then Moses stretched out his staff toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire ran down to the earth. Of course, it takes lightning to make thunder. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt, and there was hail and fire flashing continually in the midst of the hail, very heavy hail, such as had never been in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hail struck down everything that was in the field in all the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And the hail struck down every plant of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, there was no hail. We sometimes refer to golf ball sized hail as about as big as it gets. This was more like baseball sized hail or larger. It was deadly for both people and animals. There was also a lot of lightning striking the earth, thunder and rain. The sound would have been deafening. Clap after clap of thunder and the sound of huge hail balls like rocks striking everything. It would have been terrifying. Nothing like this had ever happened before. Egypt gets less than one inch of precipitation a year or rain. This again was a direct judgment on another Egyptian god. But it takes water in the clouds and freezing temperature in the clouds to make hail. They don't have enough moisture in their clouds to do anything like that until now. And it is hot in the land of Egypt, so for it to be freezing temperature in the clouds it would be most unusual. Verse 27, Then Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron and said to them, This time I have sinned, and the Lord is in the right, and I and my people are wrong. Plead with the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail. I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I have gone out of the city, I will stretch out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be no more hail, so that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and stretched out his hands to the Lord, and the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain no longer poured upon the earth. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet again and hardened his heart, he and his servants. So the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people of Israel go, just as the Lord had spoken through Moses. Some time had passed, and new crops had come up. Exodus 10, the eighth plague, locusts. God gave directions again to Moses. Verse 3, So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your country, 
and they shall cover the face of the land so that no one can see the land. The locusts would be so thick, it would be like a carpet of them on the ground. Verse 5, And they shall eat what is left to you after the hail, and they shall eat every tree of yours that grows in the field, and they shall fill your houses and the houses of all your servants and of all the Egyptian, as neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen from the day they came on earth to this day. Then he turned and went out from Pharaoh. Verse 7, Then Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long shall this man be to snare to us? Let the men go that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not yet understand that Egypt is ruined? Verse 8, So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God. But which ones are to go? Moses said, We will go with our young and our old. We will go with our sons and our daughters and with our flocks and herds, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. But he said to them, The Lord be with you if I ever let you and your little ones go. Look, you have some evil purpose in mind. No, go the men among you and serve the Lord, for that is what you are asking. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Moses would not compromise. He followed God's instructions. So, verse 12, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, so that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every plant in the land and all the hail has left. Verse 13, So Moses stretched out his staff over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. When it was morning, the east wind had brought the locusts, and the locusts came up over all the land of Egypt and settled on the whole country of Egypt. Such a dense swarm of locusts had never been seen before, nor will ever be again. They covered the face of the whole land, so that the land was darkened, and they ate all the plants in the land and all the fruit of the trees that the hail had left. Not a green thing thing remained, neither tree nor plant of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. Just think of looking out and not seeing one bit of vegetation. It was bare dirt everywhere, nothing else. From people who have dealt with locust invasions, I understand that the noise of millions and millions of locusts eating everything would be absolutely deafening. The locusts ate every green thing that had come up after the hail some time before. They were a living, moving carpet that covered every bit of ground, devouring everything as they moved through the houses, through everything. This is a picture of a much smaller locust invasion in Africa a few years ago. All the brown is locusts, and they are consuming what little greenery is left. The locusts came with an east wind from the sea. Verse 16, Then Pharaoh hastily called Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore, forgive my sin, please, only this once, and plead with the Lord your God only to remove this death from me. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and pleaded with the Lord, and the Lord turned the wind into a very strong west wind, which lifted the locusts and drove them into the Red Sea. Not a single locust was left in all the country of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go. The locusts came with an east wind, and they were driven back to the Red Sea with a west wind. The ninth plague, darkness. Verse 21, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. Maybe it was like a thick darkness that felt like a smothering blanket. So Moses, verse 22, So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all of the people of Israel had light where they lived in the land of Goshen. If any of you have ever toured an underground mine or cave, there was probably a time where, after warning you, they turned off all the lights. I've been on several mine tours, and I can tell you that it is really dark. 
you literally cannot see your hand in front of your face. As kids, we have all awakened in the middle of the night and been scared stiff by things we imagined were in the dark in our bedroom. Everyone in the land of Egypt, except the Israelites, was in total darkness for three days. I am sure it was the longest three days of each Egyptian's life. There was no way to tell time. They only had sundials, no clocks. That darkness seemed to last forever to the Egyptians. Absolute darkness is a picture of our sin. Unless the penalty for our sin is paid, after we die, we will be in darkness forever, away from God. The Bible tells us that as Creator, Jesus created physical light, and He also gives us eternal or spiritual light for those who receive Him as their Savior. This darkness was a judgment against their sun god, Ray, who was possibly the most important of their gods. John 8, 12, again Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is talking about life eternal with him forever in heaven. Without Jesus, you only have darkness inside now and later forever. But God didn't want any of us to spend eternity without him. He loves us so much. God the Son, the Lord Jesus, left his absolutely perfect place of called heaven and came to this old, sinful, dirty earth where he was born as a baby. We celebrate his birthday at Christmas. Almighty God became a human being like us. But he was still God. He never sinned. When, as an adult, after traveling around Judea, where he lived, for three years teaching men about God, including Jesus, taught him about himself, because remember, he's God too, he let wicked men kill him by putting him on a cross. This was part of Almighty God's plan all along, because when Jesus was on the cross, God the Father put all the punishment for every sin that has ever been committed or will be committed on the Son, God, the Lord Jesus Christ. To prove he had paid for our sin, he came back alive from the dead three days later. We celebrate that at Easter. The price for our sin has been paid. It is up to us to accept God's free gift of forgiveness for our sin. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. You can do that right now by praying silently, Dear Lord Jesus, I know I have done bad things. I ask you to forgive my sin and come into my heart and life by your Holy Spirit. Back to the land of Egypt many years ago. Verse 24, Then Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go, serve the Lord. Your little ones may also go with you. Only let your flocks and herds remain. Even though it was pitch black, the servants of Pharaoh would have had torches to get to the house of Moses and Aaron. Pharaoh tries another compromise, just leave your herds. But Moses says no. Verse 27, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Take care never to see my face again. For on the day you see my face, you shall die. Moses said, As you say, I will not see your face again. Moses was angry, and rightly so, as he left Pharaoh's presence. Our next lesson will cover the last plague, the one that makes Pharaoh drive the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt with all their possessions. Moses sees Pharaoh again, but Moses doesn't die. We will find out next time who does die. Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this lesson you have given us from your Holy Word. We pray now if there is a boy or girl, man or woman who has never received Jesus as their Savior from the penalty of their sin, they will pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying to, on the cross to pay the penalty of my sin and coming back to life to prove that you did. I know I have sinned and done bad things, and I ask you to come into my heart and life with your Holy Spirit 
Forgive me of my sin and be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Until next time, may the Lord bless you. Have a great week. Goodbye.